For the first time since 2014-2015, the New York Rangers have won the President's Trophy. We're taking a moment to celebrate an awesome season, wondering whether the lengthy layoff is a good thing or a bad thing, and trying to figure out who the Rangers might face in round one. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1048 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Rangers... Go into Madison Square Garden last night. They take care of business. They post a convincing 4 to nothing shutout victory against the Ottawa Senators. They had a chance to clinch everything. Everything was still on the line and up for grabs. I mean, obviously, we knew the Rangers were going to be going to the playoffs. We've known that for quite some time, really even before they officially clinched. But look, I mean, a lot of different ways this could have shaken out if the Rangers would have stumbled and lost to the Senators, or for that matter, if they would have lost to the Islanders the game before. Instead, they play great hockey in both games, and they seal the deal last night. That win gives them uh, the Metro Division, Metro Division Championship. You've got that. You've also got the best record in the Eastern Conference, and you've got the President's Trophy. All those things have now been clinched. The Ranger regular season is over. The NHL's regular season actually still goes until Thursday, so we got to wait and see where things shake out as far as who the Rangers playoff opponent might be. And we'll discuss that a little bit later in today's episode. But it's just kind of interesting to me that uh, there are four different teams the Rangers could play in round one. And the last couple of years, we we pretty much knew they were going to play the Devils last year. And the season before that, it felt for a long time that they were on a collision course with the Penguins. And this year, obviously, uh, things are quite a bit different. Part of that, obviously, is the fact that the Rangers are in first place in their division, and there's so many teams gunning for that last wild card spot. So, obviously, we'll see what happens, but just a great ending to a phenomenal season for the Rangers. Best record in the NHL. I mean, really appreciate that. Really let that sink in a little bit. It's never easy as Ranger fans, and we don't know what's going to happen next. And, obviously, uh, the only you know true happy ending here is if the Rangers win four playoff series, win exactly 16 more games, and are lifting that beautiful Stanley Cup over their heads when it's all said and done. But they've at least got a shot at it. I think they have as good of a chance as just about any other team in this league. There's going to be some tough matchups for sure. There's really no such thing as an easy uh, Stanley Cup playoff series win. We know that it's always a grind, and you got to go out there and battle. But I think the Rangers are uh, made of the right stuff that they can go out there and do that. And... You know, franchise record, 55 wins, franchise record, 28 comeback wins. It's just a great season by any measure. And look, obviously the Rangers still have much bigger fish to fry here, but I would be remiss if I didn't take a quick minute uh, to go ahead, raise my glass to all of you, and just kind of cheers this season. Like I said, the Rangers uh, went through this entire campaign and continue to put their best foot forward on a night in and night out basis. Obviously, you know, January was a bit of a struggle, but they might be better for going through those struggles in the long run. And you'll get the odd game or maybe they just can't find that fifth gear. I, I think the game against the Flyers uh, was a very good example of that. They, they just didn't have it that night. And obviously they bounced back in a big way since then. Um, but you don't get to win the president's trophy in this league. If you're not a team that routinely plays with, uh, you know, energy, desperation, urgency, uh, a team that goes out there and is looking to get two points every single night. If you take off portions of the season, you're not going to end up with the best record in the entire league. And, uh, you know, obviously the president's trophy that that's not ultimately the trophy that we want, but it's a nice little, uh, you know, addition to the trophy case along the way. And obviously we hope uh, that just, this just leads to bigger and better things for uh, this Ranger team, but I also just want to thank you guys. Another regular season has concluded here on Locked On New York Rangers, and uh, it's just been a blast getting to host this podcast, talk Ranger hockey with you guys, and you know, going through the entire roller coaster that is Ranger hockey. You know, 
all the seasons, the preseasons, the postseasons, the off seasons. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. And uh, I know a lot of you guys have been here from day one. Some of you are kind of new and everything in between, but it's, it's just a lot of fun doing this and uh, having this little Ranger community here. Let's also uh, appreciate the fact that the Rangers did this, you know, that they, they sealed the home ice advantage, the president's trophy, the whole nine yards. They did this by winning the last two games of the regular season after they had lost two games in a row. And after, as I mentioned a minute ago, they had probably one of their worst performances of the season. I, I would put it on the Mount Rushmore of a lousy New York Rangers showings this year, that game against the Flyers where uh, they basically just got blown out, but everything's still on the line. For the Rangers, they've been on top of the division for the entire season, really. Uh, the Canes have been furiously trying to, to chase them down. I mean, the Canes are on fire recently, and the Rangers just basically keep shooing them away. And on the last day of the regular season, it came right down to the wire, but the Rangers get the job done. And these last two regular season games here, I think it's the most pressure that this Ranger team has faced probably the entire season because they got up to such an awesome start, and they you know padded points early. They, they banked points early, and... Obviously, you know, it looked pretty early, like at the very least, this is going to be a playoff team. And of course, uh, they're all that and then some at this point. But what if they face pressure like this? You know, they had uh, a chance. There, there was a chance there that the Rangers could lose the President's Trophy, lose the best record in the East, lose the division title, and they would not let it happen. The only way for the Rangers to prevent that from happening after the loss of the Flyers was to win each of these last two games. They accomplished that feat. They beat the Islanders, a desperate Islander team, a white hot Islander team that had won six in a row, uh, back and forth game with them, tying the game late, ultimately winning it in the shootout. So a clutch win there. And look, Ottawa's not a great team. I, I think we all know that, but you're going up against a team that is going to play loose and free because they're not going to the playoffs. So they might as well just try to have some fun at the end of their season here. But the Rangers take care of business there and they post an emphatic four or nothing shutout victory. So uh, the Rangers, their destiny was in their own hands with two games left. And they answered the bell. They won both those games. They left nothing to chance. We don't have to worry about, you know, the Blue Jackets beating the Canes tomorrow night or anything along those lines. Uh, Rangers just did a, a great job. The, these two wins were very impressive. And look, there's no substitute for Stanley Cup hockey, playoff hockey. Um, but I do think this is the most, uh, you know, high stakes games that the Rangers have played all season, these last two games here. And they passed with flying colors, just good stuff all around. Uh, so again, just a phenomenal season. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, with me throughout the entire season. And now the real fun starts because Ranger playoff hockey right around the corner, looking like game one is going to be on Sunday. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. We'll talk about the layoff. You know, is that good or bad? That's always the debate it is a long layoff. You, know, you get a little extra rest or, you know, it could be bad because you might not be sharp. You know, we'll talk about that whole, um, you know, ongoing debate that has really been around for decades and not even just in hockey, but really in all sports. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll also talk about who the Ranger first-round opponent might be and, and what the playoff picture looks like at this moment. We'll get to all that fun stuff in just a second. But first, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Save even more when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats. Toggling this feature shows you the total up front with no surprise at checkout. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. It's Locked On's live NFL mock draft on April 17th at 7 Eastern time streaming on the Locked On Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 Eastern time to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 Eastern Time, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, so let's go ahead, 
keep everything rolling here. Definitely want to uh, continue talking about, you know, just how generally awesome it is that the Rangers have obviously won the President's Trophy. And we keep everything rolling with some discussion about the layoff for the Rangers because there is going to be a considerable amount of time between you know this regular season finale that we just saw last night and game one of the playoffs. And there's a couple of schools of thought here. You know, this again, this debate really does come up in just about every sport. Is extra layoff a good thing? Does it allow, you know, players that are banged up to rest a little bit, make sure they're ready to go for the playoffs? Is the opposite true? Do you kind of lose your edge? Are you not quite as sharp? Um, obviously, you know, there's a pretty compelling case to be made for both. But one thing that I've kind of noticed with the Rangers is that I think they're suited to handle just about anything because we've seen a lot of evidence that the Rangers do well when there's a lot of games in a short amount of time. We've also seen evidence that the Rangers benefit from a little bit of extra rest. And to kind of highlight that and what we saw from this team in the regular season, to begin with, you got to go back to the Ranger record in the second game of a back-to-back. To be exact, the Rangers in the second game of a back-to-back this season went 11-1. and That's incredible in and of itself. Just a v- another very impressive stat uh, for a team that had a lot of them this season. And, you know, for anybody that's still out there talking about how the Rangers have no heart, go ahead and show them the Ranger record in the second game of a back-to-back. Once again, 11-1. and Now, of course, some of their opponents on some of those days, they might have also been playing in the second game of a back-to-back, but not all of them. And regardless, even if that is the case, Uh, The Rangers won 11 out of 12, so that's incredibly impressive. Now, back-to-backs in the Stanley Cup playoffs are not super common. Sometimes, I I feel like most series, what you get is basically just, uh, you know, you play a game, one day off, you play another game, another day off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're basically playing every other night, which is actually what the Rangers were doing down the stretch at the end of the regular season here. Um, But they do happen from time to time. You'll occasionally get the back-to-back, and it's nice to know that the Rangers have thrived under such circumstances in the past, you know, earlier this season. So if the Rangers had to just jump right back into the fire and, you know, they were playing tonight or tomorrow night in the playoffs right after the regular season ended, I think for sure uh, they were, they would be, you know, suited for that. And you never know. You know, the Rangers may have a playoff series that goes seven games and then the next series is starring either the next night or the night after that. And you, again, just had to basically jump right back into the fire. By that same token, though, yes, the Rangers have been great. The second game of a back-to-back and they've done well, uh, mostly done well when they've had to handle a lot of games in a short amount of time. The flip side of that, they've also responded very well after layoffs. There's two that you can point to from this past season. We'll start with the one that's a little bit less notable and the one that happened earlier in the season. That occurred in the middle of November. The Rangers, in a week in the middle of November, went Monday through Friday without playing any games at all. And immediately coming out of that break, the Rangers then won four out of their next five games. But the big one, the big long layoff, and and the one that felt like it was coming at a good time for the Rangers, that of course occurred in January and actually went into February as well. Rangers had a rough January. It's well documented, hands down easily, their worst month of this season. They had lost four out of five games heading toward the All-Star break in January, and they had one last game left against the Senators, fell behind 2-0, came storming back 1-7-2. So the Rangers at least got a win at the very end there. But then you've got a long layoff. The Rangers went eight straight days without playing any hockey. You know, the All-Star break was in there. So, you know, Igor got into that game and, uh, you know, the Rangers had had their players in the All-Star game. But uh, regardless, very long layoff there. And how did the Rangers respond? What did they do after they had to go eight straight days without playing an NHL hockey game? Well, they ripped off a nine-game winning streak and they ended up going 10 and one in the month of February. And in order, this is the teams that the Rangers beat um, coming out of the all-star break that year or or that month. And, um, you know, obviously having a long layoff. These are the teams in order that they beat coming out of that lengthy break. They beat the Avalanche, the Lightning, the Blackhawks, the Flames, the Canadians, the Islanders. That was the outdoor game. uh, The Stars, the Devils, and the Flyers. So, There's a good mix of teams there. There's some bona fide Stanley Cup contenders in that list. There's some bad teams in that list as well. And there's a couple teams, uh, at least one, where we don't even know if they're going to make the playoffs or not. So so you really got a a good mix of really good teams, middle-of-the-road teams, not-so-good teams. And regardless, bottom line, Rangers responded exceptionally well after the long layoff. So the, the bottom line here, again, is when this team plays or how often this team plays, it really doesn't seem to bother them that much. I mean, honestly, it's probably one of those things where we as fans uh, worry about it and talk about it a lot more than the players do. I mean, they don't make the schedule, so they just have to show up whenever uh, the league says it's time for them to play and be ready to go. And 
we've uh, we've seen the Rangers do that all season. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a second game of a back to back where they're eleven and one, or they have to go a week, almost a week, more than a week without playing hockey. They can handle that very well uh, too. So I fully expect the Rangers to take advantage of this time off, and obviously they're going to be practicing and everything, working on things that they need to work on. Um, but they've shown in the past they can come out of a lengthy break and play very, very well after said break concludes. And I look for them to do the same thing here. They've shown all season they're made out of pretty tough stuff and they'll deal with any uh, circumstances that they're dealt. And obviously another trend that we hope continues going into the playoffs. So going to keep everything rolling in just a second. I want to shift our attention to you know who the Ranger uh, playoff opponent in round one might be. Like I said, there are still four candidates uh, remaining as far as potential First round opponents for the Rangers. Also going to have a couple of just random thoughts from this uh, season concluding game here against the Senators. And we're going to do all that in just a second. First, though, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I've been told I'm a competitive person. And bottom line is that we all have a competitive side. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like in classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or on Google Play. All right, so we're going to break down this wild Eastern Conference playoff picture in just a minute here, but I did have a couple of uh, just regular season concluding thoughts as far as this game against the Ottawa Senators is concerned. Jack Rosovic, he needed a goal, he needed a moment, and he got one here. Uh, he and Kreider and Mika, too, all, all three of them, really, all forwards on that line, all did a nice job forcing the Senators into a turnover. And then, of course, Rosovic scores from the doorstep, a tipping goal off of a feed from Kreider. But you've got a really nice play by Mika and Kreider. They kind of trap Pinto near the boards, and he didn't really have anywhere to go, uh, either skating away from them or trying to make a pass. Uh, just no real good options for him. Uh, you've got a situation where then Kreider is able to tip the puck away. Uh, the centers are about to recover the puck in the neutral zone, but there's Rosovic. He's applying pressure. He tips the puck away. It goes over to Kreider. Kreider and Rosovic hit the Jets. They're off to the races. Kreider up the left side. Centers for Rosovic. Rosovic, a tip-in goal from the doorstep. And just like that, the Rangers won nothing. And again, just a moment that I feel like Jack, Jack Rosovic really needed. Uh, you know, he's done okay. He gets his points here and there, but he just hasn't really been like a big-time impactful player uh, for the Rangers since that trade was made. We saw him as a healthy scratch earlier this season, you know, down the stretch here. And, you know, I've talked about this in the past. I don't think that he'll be a healthy scratch in the playoffs, certainly not for game one. He'll be out there for game one. But is it something that's completely off the table? I wouldn't say that either. You know, Jack Rosovic is going to have to go out there and he's going to have to perform and, you know, bring something to the table if he wants to hold on to his roster spot. And that becomes especially true if Filipino does the impossible, gets back into this lineup for some playoff games. But again, he needed a moment like this, and it wasn't just the goal. Really nice defensive play there, too. You know, tipping the puck away from his opponent and, you know, starting the rush up the ice for the Rangers. Another big takeaway, well, Igor Shosturkin was Igor Shosturkin once again. A 26-save shutout. Uh, just a really solid performance, some some tough saves. He had to hold his ground during a couple of scrambles in the Ranger crease. Uh, the way I see it, man, he, he's got this. You know, Igor is Igor. He's mostly been Igor this season, went through a, a tough patch. That certainly seems to be behind him. I think Igor Shosturkin shows up in a big way for this team in the playoffs. Looking at his stats, his regular season stats and playoff stats are almost identical. Regular season career goals against average for Igor is 243. His playoff goals against is 2.45. So it's basically a tie. You look at the goals against average in the regular season, 921, even better in the playoffs at 929. So Igor Shesterkin, certainly a goalie that rises to the occasion. Really, the only like two bad playoff games that he's played were games three and four against Pittsburgh two years ago. And then obviously he recovered from that and helped the Rangers uh, complete that comeback from three games to one down and uh, go on a nice little playoff run that season. But Igor, you know, even last year, he was the best player on the ice consistently through that entire series for the Rangers. And 
you know, you never know for sure. You never know what can happen, but I'll take my chance with the Igor Shesterkin against basically any goalie in this league. I'm always going to feel we felt this way as Ranger fans when Lundqvist was here. I think a lot of us feel this way with Igor. When the Rangers are in a playoff series and Lundqvist back then and Igor right now, you've got that guy in your crease. You've got an edge on your opponent no matter who you're playing. Is that always the case? Kind of, yeah. I mean, like maybe every once in a while there's a goalie over on the other side where, okay, you know, that guy's big time too and, you know, he's a Vesda contender and it's going to be, you know, neck and neck here. But, you know, I'll never feel, as long as Igor Shesterkin is wearing a Ranger jersey, I don't think I'm ever going to feel like the Rangers are a disadvantage when it comes to goalie. And, of course, we know uh, how important good goaltending can be when it comes to the Stanley Cup playoffs. Another big takeaway from this game, Rangers special teams continue to dominate. Now, they were 0 for 3 on the power play in this game, but overall the power play has been very good. And at least as of last night, the Rangers were top 3 in both power play and penalty kill. The PK, you can't do any better on the penalty kill than the Rangers are doing right now. To begin with, uh, the two shorthanded goals in the last two games in this one, you've got another really good defensive play from both Bika and Kreider. Uh, you know, there's pressure in the corner. Uh, the, the centers have the puck in the Rangers zone. They're being pressured by the Rangers. And you've got Kreider passing out of the corner up the ice to Mika Zibanejad. Mika to Fox in the neutral zone. Fox to Kreider over the blue line. Kreider back to Fox. Fox is crashing the net. Tipping goal for the Rangers. That made it two to nothing. And again, the special teams for the Rangers basically all season power play and PK have both been a big time strength for this team. They've been better than ever recently, and especially the penalty kill. Uh, you just see that there's a lot of guys they can go to. You know, they're blocking shots. They're causing turnovers. They are denying entry into the Rangers zone. There's been a couple of incidents these last couple of games where, you know, the Ranger penalty killers are, are standing up opposing forwards at the Ranger blue line. They're putting big time pressure on their opponents. At the blue line, you know, once they do gain the zone and if they do, if they are able to, you know, get possession and get set up, you're seeing the Rangers apply a lot of pressure at the top of the Rangers zone. And that's led to some turnovers as well. Even a couple of odd man breaks and some rushes for the Rangers. There's times where the Rangers are dominating time of possession while they're shorthanded. So again, it's very difficult to envision what a penalty kill that is better than this even looks like because they're doing everything. I mean, everything is firing on all cylinders and all you can say is just keep it up because obviously uh, special teams are going to be big in the playoffs, especially penalty kill. You have to have a good penalty kill. If you have a bad penalty kill, it's borderline impossible to win the Stanley Cup because sooner or later, it's going to catch up to you. Yeah, you can try to stay out of the box and all that and that's all well and good, but you're going to take a penalty sooner or later and you got to be able to kill that off and the Rangers are uh, doing a fantastic job of doing just that down the stretch here and basically all season as well. The other big takeaway too, the Rangers at this point, they are basically guaranteed to go into the playoffs with these new look defense pairings. Now, Lindgren and Fox are obviously still together, but the second pairing now is Miller and Schneider. And then you've got the third pairing of Gustafson and Truba. And that's what it's going to be game one. I don't think you make changes like this. And I don't think you put them out there for the last two games of the regular season like this. If you're not strongly considering going with this alignment in the Stanley Cup playoffs and the fact that they've played very well and given up very few goals. I mean, they've only allowed two goals in the last uh, two games combined here. So yeah, all signs point to those being the defense pairings. And I also thought this was interesting. I wanted to, I made a note while I was watching this game to take a look at the time on the ice for all the different Ranger defensemen, because kind of wondering, you know, will they distribute it, you know, evenly now that Truba is down on the third pairing? Would somebody's ice time, you know, probably Truba take a hit in one way or another? This is the ice time for the Ranger defenseman in this game. So you got Adam Fox leading the way, big surprise there, right? But he was out there for 21-36. And then the other five defensemen were pretty bunched together in terms of time on the ice. You've got Miller, 19-23, Gustafson, 18-37, Schneider, 18-20. Actually, Truba's in front of Schneider. Truba was at 18-24, then Schneider at 18-20, and then Lindgren at 18-08. So from the defenseman on the Rangers who had the second most ice time, that was Miller at 1923, to the Ranger defenseman with the least amount of ice time, that would be Lindgren at 1808. There is only a difference there of a minute and 15 seconds. So they distributed time on the ice about as evenly as you possibly could, other than Fox, but we know Fox is going to be out there constantly. You know, it kind of stands to reason that they would get him a lot of ice time. But that was just interesting to see them distribute the ice time as, as evenly as just about you possibly could. You know, for me, this this whole thing is not necessarily about trying to hide a certain defenseman or trying to, um, you know, get, give a certain defenseman as little ice time as possible. It's about just going with the best 
defensive pairings. Linger and Fox have had enormous success over the years. Miller and Truba at times, you know, the two of them together have been very good. And I, I think there is something to Keandre Miller um, complimenting Truba for helping him get, you know, used to being in the NHL and everything and kind of being the big brother. But the bottom line is that pairing just has not been clicking uh, for good chunks of the season and certainly recently. And Miller and Schneider was, and Miller and Schneider continues to click. Um, so it, it only makes sense to put those two together. And Jacob Truba, since coming back, hasn't really had his A game. I think he's looked a little bit better these last couple of games. Uh, there was actually a shift. I got to highlight this because if there's one defense pairing that Ranger fans are maybe a little concerned about going into the playoffs, I would think it's probably Truba and Gustafson. They both made fantastic plays on the goal by Lafreniere that made it four to nothing. So centers have the puck. They're in the Ranger zone. You got Truba going down to the ice fully extending his stick, knocking the puck away from his opponent. So a nice play there. Uh, the puck is still loose. Vincent Trocek gets to it. He tips it ahead to Truba, or in Truba's direction, getting toward the, the blue line and getting into the neutral zone. Uh, Truba lays out to hit the puck ahead with his stick and basically spring the Rangers on a rush. You've got Panarin going up the left side over the blue line. Uh, he hits Gustafson, who was trailing the play. So Gustafson gets involved here too. Gustafson could have easily shot this puck. Instead, a brilliant pass straight across the ice to his right to Alexi Lafreniere. Lafreniere scores from the doorstep, his 28th goal. But great plays there by Truba and Gustafson. And, you know, it's like I was saying, maybe sometimes you get a little too comfortable with a certain defense partner and you're out there with somebody new and it just forces you to be a little bit more on your toes, a little bit sharper. Ranger defense been looking good, good these last couple of games. And like I said, given what we've seen and the fact that they made these changes, I'll be shocked if they go with any other uh, alignment other than, you know, the, the ones that we saw in these last two games. So I figure uh, one more thing that I definitely want to do here is take a look at these uh, wacky playoff clinching scenarios in the Eastern Conference. So when we last talked in our last episode, there were still six different teams that the Rangers could theoretically play in the first round of the playoffs. It's down to four. They can no longer play the Lightning in the first round. They can no longer play the Islanders in the first round. Uh, the Islanders, for what it's worth, are going to play the Canes. The Lightning will play either the Bruins or the Panthers, depending on who wins that division. But that leaves four teams. All four of these teams have one game remaining. And this is also the order that they currently sit in the standings. There's four teams for one spot. You got the Capitals. They control their own destiny. They are followed by, in order, the Red Wings, the Penguins, and the Flyers. The Capitals and the Wings have 89 points each. The Penguins have 88 the Flyers have 87. And this is where it really gets crazy. I've never seen a, a clinching scenario quite like the one that I'm about to explain to you guys. But here we go. So tonight, the Flyers going to be in action against the Caps. Two of the teams hoping to get in to the playoffs claim that last spot. The Caps, like I said, they control their own destiny. They clinch with a win of any kind. You know, regulation, overtime, shootout, whatever it is. If they get two points, they're in. But for the Flyers, and this is where it gets crazy, they must win in regulation to keep their playoff chances alive. Because if they go into overtime with the Capitals, they're two points behind the Capitals right now. So if they go into overtime with the Capitals, even if they beat them, they only gain one point on them. The Capitals stay ahead of the Flyers. The Flyers can't possibly make the playoffs if this game goes into overtime, even if they end up winning it. So the Flyers, I mean, to me, that tells me that what's going to happen in this game, if this game is tied and it's getting late in the third period, we're down to Two minutes left, a minute left. The Flyers have to pull their goalie at the end of regulation in a tie game because winning in regulation is the only way that the Flyers can keep their you know slim playoff chances alive. So I would look for them to do that if that happens. And the other crazy part about this, I mean, imagine being a Penguins or Red Wings fan right now because you need the Capitals to lose. So you're watching this game and it's tied and the Flyers are pulling their goalie, inviting the Capitals to score an empty net goal in a tie game, which would then give the Capitals the final playoff spot. It would, in one fell swoop, eliminate the Flyers, the Penguins, and the Red Wings. So that's pretty crazy to think about. But I think they're going to do it. I mean, you got to be, if you're a coach in this league, you, you got to be aware of situational, you know, scenarios like this. Where, okay, uh, an overtime win does us no good. We have to do everything possible to win it in regulation. So that's where things stand. The other teams, Detroit is in Montreal tonight. So Detroit will claim the last playoff spot if they win their game and if the Capitals suffer a loss of any kind. So that would get Detroit into the playoffs if, if Detroit wins. And then the Penguins, they play the Islanders tomorrow night. The Penguins can get in if they win. And I believe if the Capitals and Red Wings both lose in any fashion because the Penguins would have uh, the tiebreaker 
of regulation wins against both those teams. So you got all that good. There's a test later. Um, but as far as, you know, who the Rangers play, what's a best case scenario and what's a worst case scenario, you know what, man, bring it on. I said in our last episode, there's no reason to really be afraid of this team or that team. If you're going to win the Stanley Cup, you're going to have to beat some really good teams. And the bottom line, you know, for all this talk that, and I see why people do it, I get it. But for all this talk about why, about like who the Ranger fans should want to face and who we don't want to face and that team's scary. You know what, man? The Rangers have the best record in the NHL. There's a lot of reasons that teams should not want to play the Rangers. I suppose at this point, the team's trying to get that last spot. Beggars can't be choosers, right? But the Rangers are the team that should be feared, not the team doing the fearing. And so uh, whoever it is, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And uh, I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of fun watching the series, regardless of who the Ranger opponent is. But it's possible in our next episode that, you know, we, we know who the Ranger playoff opponent is going to be. We'll see how it all shakes out. Definitely looking forward to coming back here and talking about it with you guys uh, in our next episode. But that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.